Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Keystone Outback 301 BQ travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. Now on your campsite, we're going to leave plenty of room for that awning to come on in now. On your off campsite, besides your slides, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to plug in right behind your tires on your off camp side or driver's side of your tow vehicle. And then your water connection is going to be up toward the front. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you're going to do is level your unit. The unit does come with a night docking light. Should you arrive at night, simply raise or lower the unit until your level. Now, should you lose power underneath this little level bubble is a spot for a manual hand, hand crank to fit on there to get this up and down without power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit, you got these scissor stabilizing jacks. You can use a drill gun or an impact driver. I just recommend you slow down when you get to the bottom. Three quarter inch hand crank comes to your unit. Run these down. Now remember, our unit's already level, so we're only going to run these down until they're taut. Um, I recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of these from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Better distribute the weight. Really good investment. Use your 10% off coupon. Grab a four pack and run these down until they're taut. Get all four of them down. Got our unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. Again, big long, looks like about 30 foot. 30 amp cord stores inside your unit. All you'll do is tuck it back in when you're done. At the end of that, should you need to plug into a 110, in your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Put it on the end of that if you need to plug into a 110. Get your power plugged in. Let's hook up our water. Got a water line in there right now, test your line. Already has on it what I'm going to tell you about. Water pressure regulator. These water pressure regulators are going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting lines in the unit. You don't know the water pressure at different campsites, so always use these. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. Before you turn your hose on, we got one more step. Hot water heater. This door will come right off here. And all we're doing at this point, folks, make sure our drain plug's back in there. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose has been on for a few minutes, I need you to go inside and open up all those slides. Because I need you to get in and open up all of your water taps. Get all your water taps throughout the unit opened up. Get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water. Then you'll know that your hot water heater is full. Then you can turn that on from indoors. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping, boondocking. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Gravity fill this with a hose. 
two things don't leave it unattended while you're filling it and have someone on the inside watching levels of this fresh water fill once it's full two ways to tell it's full there's an overflow valve right here or again i said on the inside there's a button you can tell when it's full once it's full put your cap back on and then whenever you want to utilize that water you'll turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump when you're hooked up to city water that is already pressurized all right we're all set up for power and water let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit continuing here on the off camp side the big pass through storage here stabilizing jacks again power connections our hot water heater come down our slides with our slides closed we'll be able to get to our dump tank down there wastewater and gray tanks are in there there's about your dump the black tank again our power big flood light for at night some storage back to the unit got a couple levels prep for a satellite here's where you plug your cable in at the spare tire i recommend getting the cover for it keep it from dry rotting coming down your campsite at your big awning some outdoor speakers and other porch lights there's a black tank flush we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite and dumping our tanks access to the back of our fridge got a semi-outdoor kitchen here really just consists of a sink and an area that you can set a griddle up drain out front over on the other side is going to be our fresh water drain cable in 110 if you want to put a tv outside then big pass through storage looks like your former owner left a couple wheel chocks for you your propane does have a cover and a regulator left you loose to open a couple of battery disconnects on this See a big one here. Another one here. Those will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. What about covers everything out here? Let's go take a look on the inside. Alright, coming up inside the unit. First thing I always like to point out the fire extinguisher. Make sure you and everyone at camp with you knows your fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway. Coming to my right as I come in. Tons. There's all those outdoor front lights that didn't have turned on when I was showing you before. Ceiling lights, porch lights. Down below that, a control panel. Brand new battery. Fresh water is filled up right now. That's what I said you hold down when you're filling your pot of water. Black and gray tanks are all full. We're running your test right now. Water heater. This is where you turn on if you're hooked up to gas this is where you do it if you're hooked up to electric it does make a difference choose correctly here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using that potable water here's where we control our awning on that awning you only want to run these out so you can see that bar and your flat falls down if you hold that down that will continue to run itself out past that point start to run itself out backwards so keep an eye on it when you run it out make sure you also have this door moved out of the way because your left arm Needs the clearance over there. The awning's in. Slide controls are here. Sure, you must have a battery in order to operate those slides. Continuing in the unit. The kitchen area. Get a self explaining to our microwave. Got a light and fan. Above your cooktop, you just turn these to light, hit your spark, and you hold that in, hit your spark when your gas is turned on, those will light up for you. Oven does have a pilot light to light. Your dramatic fridge, turn that on here. Push that in, you can be on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift that up, now you're just on gas. If that light comes on, your gas is low. 
Send you down the hall to your thermostat. Turn that AC on. Hear that blasting? Shut that off. Shuts off rather quickly. Turn that up. Turn the heat on. Hear that kick on. Shut that off. You'll notice it'll take a few minutes for that to cycle through before it actually shuts off. Next to that register is going to be the breaker box and fuses. A ton of 15s in there. A couple odds and ends. Highly recommend that you have some of those with you when you go camping. So left that is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are all boondocking dry camping and you're going to be gone for the day, use the battery disconnect to keep this run your battery down. Continue back down the hall. We'll head into our bathroom. A couple things to mention in here. 110 with GFCI reset. Plumbing. A little plumbing to maintain. It's mostly PEX down here nowadays. Keep an eye on it. You're bouncing the house down the road. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. And here, hand crank open, power exhaust vent. Oh, you gotta turn on down here. You will hand crank that to open that. Back into our big bedroom area. There's our lighting. Individual lighting up here in the bunks. Our bed area. Got some storage up underneath your bed. Tons of room there. Prep for a TV here. 110 and cable. Separate door, make sure you keep it locked. Heading all the way up into our bunk area. Well, beforehand, we'll stop at our dinette. See your table will fold down. Set it on these lips right here. Throw a couple flat cushions on top, gives you another sleeping quarters. The sofa. A little jackknife. Nope, this one actually has a hide a bit. So remove your Velcro cushions. Grab our bar and pull everything forward. There's your base for your bedding. Mattress here in there back in the day. Just the platform now. TV. We're in a metal building, probably won't pick up any channels. So when you arrive at the campsites, run a digital channel scan. It'll help you to pick up your channels. Let me show you that working. Down below that is our sound system. Turn that on. Three zones. Let's see if we can pick up a channel in here. Mm -hmm. oh, I just heard someone talking. We'll for you next week. All right, so there's indoors. That is just a bedroom. And C is outdoors. So all three. 50. With me now, Amanda, one of the reps here at the Tri City RV. I want to get into a camper or a unit, but I nice don't want system. to spend a whole bunch every. Come to Tradewinds RV Center. Prep for a TV in your bunk area. These are all individual lights. And that about covers everything on the inside. Smoke alarm up over top of your dinette. Let's act like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up. Let's start by coming to my control panel and showing off all of my lighting then I can walk through the unit and see any individual lighting that I need to shut off now I'll say doors and drawers walk through the unit make sure all doors and drawers are closed nothing's gonna impede your slides from coming in see only right here We're just gonna hit yeah on your slide right there. Just gonna bring in that bedroom slide back there. Again, make sure nothing's in between that bed 
and your dresser on the foot end of it. The TV is on a slide up here or on a uh, swivel mount. Make sure that you have that mounted back against the wall better. Come up here and bring this one in. I don't know if you heard the clunky noise on the one down there. You probably will on this one. That's just a slide mechanism saying, don't bring me in any further. Letting you know that it's in all the way. There's an old new units. New units. Again, see it utilizes every inch here and we're in. Shut off my interior lights and exit the unit. Now, the biggest thing on these steps you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open now otherwise this will catch on it you also have adjustable feet remove these cotter pins lift the leg to where you need it bringing this in turn this to the right or left it doesn't matter that'll lock your steps in there before you leave the dump station make sure you lock and deadbolt this exterior door if we're boondocking we're going to get up underneath there and dump that fresh water tank. <coughs> Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home. If we are at a regular campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable. Bring up our stabilizing jacks. Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. All right, park accordingly. Now you've got two dumps here, gray here and a black and gray here. I recommend getting a Y. Get you a Y or a V. Get that hooked up. We're going to start here in the back where it says black tank or a sewer outlet. I'm going to pull this black handle right here. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, leave that handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station. Again, emphasizing leaving that black handle open. Come on around here to this tank flush. Hook that hose up, let it run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that washout you just put in there has drained. When that's done draining, we're gonna close that black handle. And we're gonna get right back here and pull this gray handle. Now, emphasis on this. When it's done, you're gonna make sure that when you push this gray handle back in, that it is turned horizontal as it is now. If you turn it to the right or left, it tends to want to drip or leak. So keep it horizontal like that. And it tends to seal it well. Remove that hose, or if you're running your Y, go ahead and come up here and hook up to wastewater or gray tank. That's gonna be clean the waters, your sinks, your showers. That's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you. While that's dumping, I like to go ahead and dump my low point drains over there. When them are done, if we're done camping for the season, come up here to your hot water heater, lift up on this pressure release valve. Be careful because that'll dump some hot water out of here. When that's done, then you can pull this drain plug. Make sure you put your door back on. A lot of people have lost them, forgetting to put them back on before hitting the road. When that last gray is done, take that sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and hit the road again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this outback for many years to come happy camping